On this edition of Check 6 Aviation, it's rudder time, baby! Welcome back, my friend, to Check 6 Aviation. It's another edition of building the RV-10, and while we wait for parts to come in from the, oops, from the last video, if you haven't seen it, yeah, I goobered up a skin, I joined the Double Dimple Club, I drilled some holes that I wasn't supposed to, yeah! So yeah, um, go see it, it's right up there. And anyway, so in the meantime, while we're waiting, there's tons of work to do. If you happen to get involved in building your own airplane, especially if it's from vans, then it, just move on while you're waiting for parts like I'm doing here. By the way, if you do choose to order a kit from Vans, then use my builder number down below. It's in the description and Vans will send me a hundred bucks as a thank you and it doesn't cost you an additional dime. So that's a good way to support the channel and it will be much appreciated from the bottom of my heart to yours. So let's get to it. Uh, today we've got of parts that I've pulled off of my Vans Aircraft parts department shelf. Um, not the actual parts department, but still, you get the idea. Got all, we're doing the rudder. Uh, I figured that's the next logical step. It would be section seven um, while we're waiting for the section six parts to come in. And yeah, so let's get to it. All right, so according to the plans, the, one of the first steps, actually the very first step in the rudder, is to cut away and make all the stiffeners and the uh, some of the parts. So if you see here, you'll see where they have uh, basically these two parts. You uh, you mark off where where the cut lines are, and you have to make you have to make the stiffeners. So you have this entire piece this is the very first one this is 10 uh, part number uh rudder 1015 a left and right and it it's not that the left is on the left as you're looking at the part and the right is on the right no the, re the reason why there's a reason why it goes that like that and it will become clear as you go on the build um it, it's uh left side of the rudder right side of the rudder not the part itself so basically you cut this in you know the first one you cut it in half a quarter inch away from the hole from the the rivet hole on both sides uh, to allow for structural um, strength and you cut away a portion of this here uh, mark down there and then boom you do that for the rest of the you know at certain intervals for all of the stiffeners. Stiffeners, obviously, as the name implies, stiffen the rudder skin. You will be back riveting those. So that is done. And now we're on the first building step, which is, oh, by the way, you also have to cut this apart as well. It's cut, uh, it comes joined and then cut it apart and take away, you know, uh, file away or uh, saw away. Well, what I did was I went ahead and used the grinding wheel to grind away and deburr uh, all of the excess. So a little bit dusty, but hey, that's how building goes. So one of the first steps, aside from making all the cuts and creating the stiffeners is Building the bottom rib, and that's what exactly what I'm doing here. You see, I'm deburring everything. There's a lot of deburring in a building process, and I'm working with the rudder control horn right here specifically, and getting it ready to Clico and finally put this thing together and start building this rudder. At this point, I am just so excited that I'm actually building an airplane. Go figure. Who would have thought that I would be grow up to become an experimental aircraft builder? But hey, it just goes to show that anything is possible 
when you put your mind to it. Regardless of where you came from, what kind of financial resources you have, if you can dream it, you can plan it, you can do it, you can get it done. And it's taken me a lot of planning to get to this point, but it's got, it's been done. So here we go uh, with countersinking and checking to make sure that my countersunk holes are at the proper depth. Test fitting the rudder control horn, Clico, and checking to make sure that I'm actually doing this right because sometimes the plans can be a little, um, you have to really pay attention, let's put it that way. Because if you're not paying attention, it is easy to mess things up. So one of the things that I had to do is I had to cut away something, uh, a little bit of the tip on the stiffeners as I was making them. Here you see me trying to use shears and well, that didn't work out so well. So I just elected to use the grinding wheel at the expense of using a little bit more of the grinding wheel. Just a word from the wise. If you do end up ordering a kit from Vans Aircraft, do not throw away the packing list because I, I can't tell you how many times I have referenced this to find out what bag parts were in, you know, little parts like the, uh, like the R-01007A, dash just right now, uh, I found out that it was in bag 1149 from the hardware kit, uh, and <laughs> let me tell you, I was like, man, I have it checked off, but I don't see where that bag is. Well, it turns out that there are some other uh, parts in there for the fuselage. So I had it on my, in my parts department with the rest of the fuselage par uh, parts, uh, some of the other fuselage parts for the tail cone. So yeah, uh, though that bag has now been moved to uh, somewhere where I will, where I was always looking for it. But yeah, don't throw it away keep it it will become a reference and this will probably be for all of the kits that you order from Vans aircraft in the course of your build so those little parts that i showed you the 1007 a those are the rudder striker plates and the the purpose that they serve is when the rudder moves from side to side especially when you hit the stops those protect the rudder yeah, the rudder spar from the yeah from over input control uh, over control inputs and uh, make sure that well it structural integrity is maintained. So here we go. We are connect. We are putting together the yeah um, the temporary you know uh, the these are the shear clips that will get yeah, all of this will go ahead will be. Uh, put together later, but I'm just kind of getting everything put, uh, you know, in in order right now, so that I can go ahead and just lay everything out. Uh, starting along with the with building the skeleton right here, and um, yeah, everything's coming together real real well uh, at this point. So moving on to some personal announcements as the blue vinyl is coming off and um, I have announced earlier that I have applied to Southwest Airlines as destination 225 degree pilot training program and uh, some people have reached out to me and said hey what's going on with that so thank you very much to those who have asked uh, that does mean a lot to me um, I have taken my ADAPT assessment. Uh, the ADAPT assessment is something that uh, is a test, basically. They want to test your math, your physics knowledge, and also your ability to multitask in a, yeah, in a cockpit environment. They also want to know what your personality type is like. So there's some personality questions in there. I saved the personality questions for last because I'm told that I have tons of personality and that I would be a great fit for anyone that wants to hire me. Uh, 
Uh, I'll leave that to them to decide. Um, uh, while we were while uh, while we're talking about this, uh, I did want to point out that it, uh, having a heat gun makes taking off the vinyl much easier. But uh, so I've 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 passed my adapt assessment. I've gotten the e I've received the email saying that hey, we uh, have received it and we are moving you on to the next step in the process, which is the virtual interview. So, no updates on when that is going to be yet. They do the virtual interviews in the order that they are received for the adapt assessment. So we will, yeah, we'll we'll get back to you. Uh, I I would hope that I would have something before Thanksgiving or maybe even early December, uh, as far as a word on that. Still to come. So one of the questions that I had for Vans Aircraft in relation to priming the parts for the airplane is, do I prime before I dimple or do I prime after? Well, the answer I got was a simple, uh, if they were doing it, they would prime after dimpling. However, in my testing, I've found that dimpling after priming doesn't seem to phase my primer at all. Um, course test with your primer on a spare on a scrap piece of metal and find out for me with the axo noble zinc chromate primer it didn't seem to phase it so if i have to do it all over again which i will in further on in the build i will go ahead and uh do all of my pre-prime prep work before dimpling and then go ahead and spray away and dimple again. That will make the step that you're seeing here go a lot smoother. And this is where I'm actually, I'm super excited about this part because I actually dimpled the forward spar. And this is part of the pre-prime prep work that I was talking about where I'm using pre-coat and really scruffing up the aluminum and getting it nice and clean because, well, like I said before, you may think that your hands are clean, but they're really not. They've got oils, and so you really do want to wear gloves, not just because of not wanting to get anything on your parts, but because, well, it's pri it's chemical. It, you know, pre-coat is a caustic chemical, and you really don't want to get it on your skin. Um, for me, I didn't have any issues if I accidentally spray, uh, sprayed it on my skin, but still, I don't want to get this in. It, it's it's as caustic, uh, almost as caustic as say Elodyne is, and it's uh, yeah, it, it's not good stuff. There, I mean, there, there's a uh, material safety data sheet for it that you really want, do want to pay attention to. Here we go, scrubbing away, scrubbing away, scrubbing away, and of course after. Oh, and of course, like I was just saying, um, I just caught myself there not wearing gloves. Uh, I think I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, I think I need to put gloves on here. All right, so we are at a good crossroads here. We have all of the parts primed, including the skins. Skins are dimpled, parts are dimpled. Um, I did show the dimpling a little bit, but I didn't want to do everything for both sides to, you know, because I thought it was a little monotonous, but primed, ready to rock. Let's get to assembling this thing. So the way that you assemble this is, you know, you, you see the shear clips at the edge of, uh, at, uh, closest to my body. Um, those are actually going to be uh, pull riveted in the final assembly step. I don't put those in just yet, uh, but I do have to basically take the stiffeners and back rivet them to the skins first. But the first, but before I do that, I have to go ahead and create uh, the uh, basically create the top and bottom rib, and that will go on to the uh, onto the whole assembly 
But let's go ahead and address the 12,000 pound gorilla in the room here. By now, you have probably heard about the financial troubles that Vans Aircraft is having. Uh, they put out a, a big release a few months, a few weeks ago. Uh, see the uh, see the link to that video here. Um, I have reached out to Greg Hughes, the uh, the president of Vans, and he uh, asking, "Hey, uh, is um, am I going to be able to get the rest of my kits when the time comes to get them?" And of course, I understand he has to be very tight-lipped about it. He has not said anything to to me yet about it. Um, but let's let's look at this from the from a thirty thousand foot perspective. Vans Aircraft as a company is a is they, they make the most popular kit airplane series whether it be the RV10, the RV8, RV9, etc. the whole line that is still in production in the world. It's the most popular airplane in you know, kit in the world. So uh, I I I understand that you know they're having some issues. I wish them well. You know, heck, I don't want any airplane company to go out of business uh, because I love aviation and I love what Vans has done for the aviation community. Uh, that said, I do believe that Vans will come out of this either in in some form, and that yeah, uh, there's too much economic viability for vans to not to not survive in some form whether it's the company being sold off you know bankruptcy reorganization um etc and and vans has already gone ahead and stated what some of the underlying issues were namely the laser cut parts thankfully my kit did not uh, was there was absolutely nothing in my kit that was laser cut parts uh, because of when I had to uh, when the kit was put together was created and was shipped it was before everything went to laser cut parts and so that that's obviously one of the main reasons why they're having so many you know, financial problems right now because well from what Greg told me at Oshkosh they scrapped every one of the laser cut parts that they still had in inventory and I can I can only imagine how astronomically expensive that would be, that would have been so yeah uh, so in this step here yeah I decided to take a, a page from Jason Ellis and put the rivets in ahead of time and just yeah uh, <laughs> just go ahead and go ha go ham at it. Uh, use a little bit of tape, and boom, back rivet. Well, we're at that at that point in the video where, well, it's time to get, cut it short. Sorry about the cliffhanger, folks. We will be cut, yeah, changing formats when we get to when we get past the rudder section. There's only going to be one more video to that we have for the rudder, thankfully and then I can get back out here and start building again. Until next time, remember this time, and if you found any value in this video, give a thumbs up, give a uh, comment down below, let us know where you're checking in from, and also, please consider subscribing. Until next time, remember this time, and always, check your six.